Hey guys, welcome to my first ever car vlog. If you told me like a year ago I would have a car vlog going up on my channel, I would tell you you're nuts. But recently, a couple of guys, a couple of YouTubers I know, Kurt J. Mack, he just recently started doing a car vlog. He put the camera on top of the car and he had these gorgeous scenery. Today it's just like maybe not the best day to do my first car vlog. It's not sunny, it's overcast, um, it is cold, it looks like it's gonna rain any second. So maybe not the best day to do it. However, uh, that's what you're getting. <laughs> so be happy about it, please. Please be happy about it. Uh, another guy I saw do a car vlog. He does a lot of them actually. The sla slap train on YouTube. Uh, he came with me to the Forza, Forza 6, Forza Fuel Challenge stuff in Austin, Texas. Saw a couple of his, really inspired by his. His is more of a talk while you drive kind of thing. Um, so it's not, exactly like Kurt's. I kind of like his style better, but there are some things I'm still tweaking. Like if the, if the windshield is a little too bright and the inside of the car is a little too dark, my apologies. Uh, I will try to fix that. I've tried a bunch of different combinations. In fact, I've got a filter on my GoPro right now to try to help with that. I don't know if it's going to work though until I watch the video back. So hopefully everything's cool. Also, my apologies if the windshield is a little small. <laughs> it is not anything I can really fix. Uh, that's just the way the car is designed. Uh, speaking of the car, if you're wondering what it is, nice pink rims, bro. If you're wondering what it is, uh, it is a 2007 Aston Martin V8 Vantage. It can get a little loud at times, but I'm actually using a mic that uh, cancels out a lot of background noise, an external mic on my GoPro, believe it or not, cancels out a lot of background noise. So you guys might not be able to hear the engine as much as I want you to hear it, because it sounds real, real nice, especially above 4,000 RPM. It sounds amazing. Uh, the reason I'm using that external mic though is because the camera is mounted way back there. There's no other place to mount the camera in this car. It's mounted to the back windshield and sort of zoomed in. Oh, I'm trying to switch from sixth to seventh. <laughs> I'm in sixth right now and I'm like, oh, what's the next gear? Uh, this is weird. I don't really talk and drive a lot, but anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Right, I'm using an external mic. Uh, it cancels out a lot of background noise. I'm sure you'll still be able to hear some of it. Maybe we'll, we'll open the window one day when it's a little bit warmer and you guys will get to hear the engine roar. But for now, this is what you're gonna have to deal with. I'm, uh, I'm just out and about running some errands. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. Again, I apologize if things are a little bit weird. Like maybe if the camera's a little shaky, I'll try to fix that stuff in the next vlog. Um, but now onto the reason for these vlogs. It's only 50 here, I should probably slow down. So, I do a lot of driving to Toronto to visit family and friends, and it's about an hour long drive each way. And I do a lot of thinking while I'm driving, so I thought maybe a car vlog would be like a perfect place to sort of put those thoughts into words. It's almost therapeutic for me when I'm driving. Um, it's just really calm and relaxing. This school bus is Oh, I thought it was pulling out of the used car lot. <laughs> I'm like, this guy just bought a school bus. <laughs> it might even be full of children. Um, yeah, it's it's really relaxing for me to drive, and I just think about a lot of things, and I think it'll be kind of cool for both of us to kind of get in my head. Even when I watch this back, I'm sure a lot of episodes, uh, I'll, I'll maybe second guess why I think what I think. The point is... It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be pretty deep sometimes. It's gonna get pretty deep sometimes. Right now, this first episode, we're just gonna talk about general stuff. The reason why I'm doing this, uh, maybe we'll talk about the car some. So the car, 2007 Aston Martin V8 Vantage. It's got two, 24,000 and 24,500 miles on it. Uh, slap. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this thing. So here's here's the deal. We were we were all talking. We we're all sitting around in Austin at the Circuit of the Americas track talking about what we drive. And uh, everybody's mentioning their cars. And I told them about my SUV that I drove, but I didn't tell anybody about this. I'm sorry, Slap. We could still be friends, right? <laughs> Maybe we could do some cruising. We will we'll race in a very legal fashion on a track somewhere. I'm just kidding. I don't want to race. I would probably lose. Um, maybe not. But yeah, uh, I'm driving this thing. I always feel weird telling people about this because people automatically there's like a certain connotation that comes with driving an Aston Martin. It's like, I'm not trying to be Bond or anything. I just, I really like British cars and I really like this one in particular. So I saved up all my pennies. 
after doing a lot of YouTube for three years, probably four. No, it was three. I bought this thing a year ago. So after three years of YouTube, I saved up all my pennies and, uh, and I bought this as sort of a car to have fun with on, uh, on my weekends, so to speak weekends, technically as a YouTuber, any, any day can be a weekend really. If you, if you work hard enough the day before, <laughs> Uh, but I, I like to have a lot of fun in this car. I like to drive it. It makes me feel nice. Surprisingly roomy. I don't know if you can see from back there, but it is. It looks like I'm squeezed in here, and I am. I'm six foot two, and I'm a pretty heavy guy. Um, but surprisingly roomy for a sports car of this caliber. It has no back seat, so you guys are technically sitting on a shelf right now. There's a shelf back there. Uh, that's where you guys are hanging out. Hopefully the view is pretty good. Just driving through town here. Uh, don't, going, going to run some errands, as I mentioned. So I bought the car with 22,000 miles on it. I put 2,500,000, or 2,500,000, wow. 2,500 miles on it since I bought it. In the summertime, I drive it almost every day, really. Uh, I probably should not be driving it in days like today because it is going to get wet, I think. I think it's going to rain. It's going to get slippery. It's a rear-wheel drive, and the tires are not in the best of shape. I could definitely use some new tires. Uh, that's gonna be done most likely at the end of this season or at the beginning of next season. And hopefully get a little bit more grip. I, I tend to slip a lot around corners, especially going around them at high speeds, which I do not recommend for your uh, daily commute. Do not go around corners at high speeds. Come on, come on Highlander, you can do it. We're doing it. You're gonna about to witness a T-bone accident. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh, that makes me feel so good. <laughs> anyway, so um, about this vlog, I will be doing, I don't know how often I'll be doing them. Maybe once a month, maybe once a week. Maybe a, oh, squirrel, oh, squirrel, oh, squirrel, oh, squirrel. I don't know if I hit that squirrel or not. Oh, God. No, I didn't hit him. Oh, this squirrel, though. Seriously, did you guys see that? You probably didn't. This guy, you guys almost witnessed a squirrel death. Oh, man. I didn't hear anything. The car didn't really hit anything. I hope he's okay. Oh, God. You know what? Maybe I should pull over and check if the squirrel is, like, stuck in my front grill or something. Uh, give me a second here. Oh, that was so messed up. These squirrels, they've got like a death wish. Okay, I'm gonna pull into this little this little uh, street here, whatever this is, and I'm gonna check this thing out, and hopefully, hopefully I don't have a dead squirrel on my front grill or anywhere on my car. Oh, this is not, I can't pull over here. I can't pull over here. Ah, right, we're gonna do it anyway. Okay. All right, guys, there was no problem. There was no squirrel. I have not murdered any animals in the making of this video. My God, that was close. That's the bad thing about this small little um, windscreen. I get windshield, windshield. Windscreen is probably not the appropriate term. Um, that's the bad thing about it. You guys probably didn't see how close that was. Okay, so back on the road. <laughs> My God, these murderous scrolls. I've never actually hit any animal while driving in my entire life of driving. I've been driving for, I would say, 14, 15 years now, maybe a little less, maybe about 12 years I've been driving. Never actually hit anything. In fact, maybe we could talk about our first episode. We'll talk quickly about, I don't want these videos to be too long either. We'll quickly talk about our first cars. So I want to know from you guys, what was your first car? Maybe you're driving your first car right now. Maybe you haven't even bought a car yet. And you can tell me about what car you want to be your first car. My very first car was a 2000 Ford Focus ZX3. Yep. It was black. It was a two-door, hence the ZX3. The ZX5s were um, four-door or five-door, I guess, if you count the hatch as a door. Um, but it was black and I beat the crap out of that thing. I tried 
modding it a little bit. I got some aftermarket springs for it. Uh, what were they called? Ibox, probably? Or I don't, I don't even know how to pronounce these things. They, I'm pretty sure they were Ibox springs, and they lowered the car for uh, uh, about an inch. I also got some European Ford Mondeo wheels off of eBay for it. So it was like multi-spoke wheels, and I got a really thin sidewall tire, and I got a front spoiler for it. I had a cold air intake on it. Um, did I have an aftermarket muffler? I can't remember if I had an aftermarket muffler. I don't think I ever got around to doing that. The story with that car was I bought it for $6,800. I shouldn't even say I bought it. I paid half of it, and then my parents paid for the other half. As sort of like my first car gift. Very, very generous of them. I'm, I'm like, I, it's amazing that they did that for me. Um, so I, I remember it was my first car, my very first car, and it was manual, and I didn't even know how to drive manual before... I even bought it. I learned manual on that car. I beat it so bad, like, I'm, I'm surprised the car survived as long as it did. I had it for about three years, I think a little under three years. Don't remember how many kilometers it had, don't remember how many kilometers I put on it. All I remember is I never went in for an oil change once. <laughs> You're supposed to do it bi-yearly or, or, or like, uh, after a certain set number of kilometers, I think with the focus, it was every 6,000 kilometers. And I didn't go once. I didn't get the oil changed once. There was, I'm sure the oil was black as black can be. Or maybe if there was any oil left even. By the end of the, of the car's life cycle, it was giving me all kinds of problems. Like the hood latch popped up once and it broke, I guess, because it was never able, I was never able to close the hood again. So I was driving around with the hood latch popped up. Very, very dangerous, especially on highways air gets under there, it could pop your hood right off. Uh, I didn't drive too much on highways back then anyway, so I wasn't too worried about that. The rear hatch popped open at random points, so I would be driving along, all of a sudden I'd hit a bump and the rear hatch just boop, pops right open. It looks like I got a giant spoiler on my car. So that was fun. The cold air intake, which I installed myself by the way, I drove through a very deep puddle once, and the way the cold air intake was designed, it sat underneath the engine to pick up the cold air from, uh, from I guess, the road, or from lower than the engine, so it wasn't picking up the engine's hot air. That cold air intake sucked up so much water that day, the car just stopped. It was I, I was going into the parking lot, or parking garage of my, uh, of my work at the time, and there was a huge puddle, car sucked up the water, and it just stopped. And I sat there for a little while, not knowing what to do. Eventually, I tried to I tried to start it up again, and it started up again. And I got it inside the garage, but the car was never the same after that. It would stutter a lot. It started dying on me on the highway. The few times that I drove on the highway, I remember once I was uh, in the left lane, doing about 120. Car just dies. I had to like emergency maneuver all the way over to the shoulder, so that I wouldn't get rear-ended by a bunch of cars because the car was just dead and I almost died that day <laughs> my god thinking back about it I'm getting like anxiety just thinking about it that was a scary scary moment but I managed to make it over I pulled over I, I reached I suspected it was the cold air intake it was raining that day too if I remember correctly and I suspect it was the suspected it was the cold air intake so I popped my hand underneath the car and pulled off the air filter <laughs> with my bare hands it was apparently not attached very well. I pulled off the air filter with my bare hands and uh, and just like I shook it and just water was dripping out of that thing. And so I, I shook it as best I could. I popped it back on and the car started up again and I drove home. And I think like a couple weeks later, I traded it in and I got a 2004 Saab 9.3 Aero in red. And that was a gorgeous car. That's probably one of my favorite cars that I've ever owned. Saab was good to me. Whoa, hi there. You want to get over? Sure. Go ahead. You were signaling. Now you've changed your mind. Okay. Life is hard. Life is filled with, filled with tough decisions. And I understand that you can't make some sometimes. All right, well, we are just about uh, ready to stop recording because I am getting to my destination. 
running a few errands here and there. I'm not going to tell you what they are because, frankly, it's none of your business. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, this vlog, and again, I'll try to fix things that are, are problems. You let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Would you, would you guys rather be up here on the dash and not see any of this stuff happening and see more windshield and more road? Or is this view okay? And in terms of the lighting, there's not much I can do other than like buying a light for inside the car to light me up a little bit better and turning down the brightness on the GoPro itself. Other than that, there's not too much I can do. I can't really buy a light to light up the inside of the car. That's kind of illegal, I think. Having like a in a, like a, your dome lights, driving with your dome lights on, pretty sure it's illegal. I might be wrong about that. I've never actually looked into it. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any tips or tricks. Let me know if you are happy the squirrel survived. <laughs> uh, let me know if you even saw the squirrel. I guess I'll watch it back and see if I if I was able to see the squirrel or not. Right in there, guys. I'm going in this Ford dealership and I'm trading this bad boy for a Focus. All this talk about my Focus has got me all riled up for a brand new one. Uh, see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.